differentials. The outside wheels must spin faster than the wheels on the inside because they have a greater distance to travel. First episode. This series from the ground up will be my sort of main series. I will do videos and every video will have a specific topic. The first one we're going to start out with will be differentials. I'll do, I'll do this in two parts. First part will go through how to maintain and build your differentials. The second part will be how to tune and how they actually work. So first part will be how to keep your car running. It's so super basic, nothing too crazy. The second part will be more towards racers and those people who want to tune their car with their diffs, why we use oils and what oils to use and also why do we use differentials that are the open differentials? Haven't these guys heard of limited slip differentials? So first off, we're gonna start out with how to rebuild or build your differential. Super basic, step by step, I'll explain it to you. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Let's get started out with this thing. So, once we finally get the diff open, I like to bleed most of the excess oil out on a paper towel. Uh, this will just make my job easier once I start to clean off the gears and pins. Uh, I like to just go basic, clean them off with a rag. Uh, some people like to use brake cleaner, uh, which might save you time, but I like to keep it old school, just for the sake of it. Now, what's really important is to clean off all dirt to prevent any extra wear. So I just make sure all the gears and out drives as well as the diff cover and the ring gear are all clean and we're good to go. Once I've got everything cleaned, uh, I like to oil the bearings. Uh, I use this ultimate bearing oil, uh, which has done its job for me and that's all I care about. Next up is greasing the out drives. Uh, I use this white Teflon grease from ultimate. Uh, this grease is really thick and I find it lasts the longest on the out drives and prevents uh, wear really well. Uh, just make sure you spread it on there evenly. Next up is the grease for the o-ring. Now to be honest I have absolutely no clue where I got this thing from but I believe any o-ring grease would do just as well. Uh, just spread it really well on the o-ring and you'll be good to go. Now that we got all that greasing out of the way we can start putting this thing together. As I push in the out drive, I make sure I want to push the o-ring out of place uh, and as it is in place, I wipe all the excess grease off that comes through. What I like to do uh, is assemble the four small gears to start out with, so I can just drop them in. Uh, I fill the diff to the top of the out drive before I will drop in the bevel gear. Uh, once I've done that, I'll put some more oil in and drop in the four small gears. I'll eye out the oil level before dropping in the final bevel gear and once I got all the gears in there I can see if I still need to add oil or if there's too much. I personally like to fill the divs full. I just make sure there is space for the out drive so that it's not overfilled once I put it all together. Um, now we are pretty much done with it. I just have to put it together. One more important thing uh, is I always use the white teflon grease. Uh, on the ring gear once I assemble the diff. With all that we should be good to go. Okay, if you still don't get a good sense of how to build a differential, just watch that again. It'll, it should have all the steps in there, it should be fully comprehensive. So just watch that again, take your time, it's pretty fast paced so whatever. Now, why do we need to use those greases and uh, why I use those specific greases. So I already elaborated a little on why I use that white grease for my out drives. That grease is really good for the out drives because it's really thick. So that grease will hold up there even during the high speed movement of the differential and it will last you the longest. So even if you don't rebuild your diff that often, it will last you pretty well. Obviously it's always better to rebuild the diff as often as you really can, but if you have that grease in there, it'll just be extra security for your differential. Then, the o-ring grease. So, the sole reason to use an o-ring grease is that the silicone oil we use actually expands these o-rings. We don't want that. The reason we don't want that is 
when they expand they don't hold in place as well and they don't work as they were designed. That grease is made just for that expansion to not happen and that's the sole reason I use that. Then uh, bearing oils. This is not really that important in my opinion. A lot of the bearings last really well without the oil. If you use this though it will free up the bearing a bit and these bearing, bearings will last a lot longer. So if you can just throw new, new bearings in there one, you know, once in a while you don't really need to use the oil but it will just give you more life for the bearings. Some people like to use bearing oils that really free up the bearings. That is also a good idea but I don't really feel that's too big of a priority. Obviously it's always a bonus but as long as it's free it's okay. If it's ultra free then good that's even better but when you start feeling that it, the car doesn't roll very well then obviously you might want to change the bearings check your drivetrain you always want to have it uh, free to a certain point but up from there I don't feel like it's it has that big of an importance so now now that we're done with greasing what if my diff just super worn out it doesn't work anymore so I personally really really rarely change the inner gears in a differential those last for a long long time some brands have s slightly softer gears that wear out faster but most brands the gears are hard enough that they wear out but they will last you a long time on the opposite though what you have to change quite often are the outdrives due to the fact that off-road is really dusty and you really cannot oil them or grease them that much because the dust will immediately overpower the grease. The outdrives will be the most worn out part of the diff. The outdrive you should change every time you feel like the gap between the dog bone and outdrive is getting too big and uh, it will be exponential. So it start out with some slow wear and then the more and more you drive it, it'll just start to wear the dog bone out even more. So I usually change both the outdrive and the dog bone at the same time. But sometimes uh, if the outdrive is a softer material, you can just change the outdrive and get away with it. But this is the part that I like to change quite often. What to realize though, that when you change the outdrives, they usually are sort of tight when you first run them. Most brands have this and that's why you should always be careful of putting all new outdrives and all new dog bones when you're going to a race meeting. New outdrives and dog bones usually have a lot of friction in them and what happens is the car will feel super stiff and once they wear out slightly it's already better than the old ones that are super worn out. But the issue is that if you have brand new ones most of the time your car will feel slightly too stiff so what I usually do is I wear them out a bit for a few few tanks or something just to get everything smooth and back rolling again. If you freshen up everything and you go straight to a race meeting, most likely you're gonna feel that the car isn't just there. And this is pretty much only because of the friction in the outdrives and the dog bones. Now, as I said, you shouldn't put new parts in uh, just before a race meeting that ha doesn't have that much practice and definitely don't put new outdrives and dog bones in in the middle of a race meeting unless you really really have to. Now when to actually rebuild the diff so when to change the oil when to change the grease and this I feel some people do this way too often they rebuild their diffs every single run or build their diffs before every main or whatever now, I personally don't like to rebuild my diffs that often. For example, a one day race, most of the time I don't make the diffs uh, at any point if there's only one or two qualifiers and then a semi and a main. That is because when you have the diff made well, it will last you quite a long time. And every time you rebuild the diff, it'll be slightly different than a diff that's run for five minutes, for example. So when I'm at a longer race, for example the Euros, I usually rebuild the diffs before qualifying and before mains. That is because every time before qualifying there's a shakedown run and before the mains most of the time if there isn't a shakedown run I will, I will rebuild them for the last qualifier. This is because I want the car 
to be as consistent as possible throughout the important runs I have throughout the race. Now, if I would make the diffs new, brand new every single run or uh, before every main or whatever, it's never exactly the same. It'll be really good for the first five minutes and then it'll change a bit. But if you have a diff that's broken in, it'll be consistent for the whole of your run. Now, some people are gonna say the exact opposite, that they want always the brand new diffs. But especially for longer mains, you really want to have a diff that's broken in because of the fact that you want to know that the diff will work exactly the same for the whole of the main. If you have a brand new diff, it'll always be slightly different for the first few minutes. So usually for a one day race, I either make the diff before the semi and then keep it same for the main, or I don't make it at all. It depends what kind of the track is. If it's high grip, you obviously have to make the diff uh, more often. If it's low grip, you don't really have to do that in my opinion. Then for longer races, I usually try to aim that if there's a shakedown, I make the diffs before that shakedown. Just because those shakedowns are exactly the perfect length to break in a diff. Now, I hope all of this was helpful. In the next video, I'm gonna go through how a differential actually works. And also how to tune your differential and how we tune it in RC and why we do it that way. Hope you like this and hope you learned something new. All right, I hope you liked that video. If indeed I did actually help you out, please let me know by writing a comment down below. Also, if you like my type of content, feel free to like my Facebook page as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share with your friends in social media. Now, if you think I was wrong about something in this video, please let me know. I'll go through all the comments and I'm really open to differing opinions and I really want to just spark up a conversation. So with all that, until next time.